All right, thank you, Brian, and welcome everyone to this uh, February 13, 2023 meeting of the Homewood City Council. Um, we're going to start tonight with a presentation from Jose Perry, who's the uh, Jefferson County Outreach Director uh, for Congressman Sewell's office. Uh, Jose, feel free to come on up here. We're glad to have you tonight. Good evening, everybody. Just want to make a formal introduction. I am Jose Perry with Congresswoman Terry Sewell's office, and I think we've grafted in Homewood into our uh, district and we're excited and want you to know that we'll do what we need to do to help the city of Homewood and its co and our constituents. Uh, a lot of you are already kind of familiar with me. Uh, we have uh, Councilor Nims who used to be on our team for Congresswoman Terry Sewell. I also want to thank uh, Congresswoman uh, Andres for introducing me to the wonderful JJ. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Someone everyone needs to know, and most people already do. <laughs> right. Uh, he helped me navigate uh, some uh, issues here in, uh, in the area. Congresswoman really wants to do her first town hall meeting in the city of Homewood, and um, JJ helped me find a location and make that work. We're looking for a date, um, as you may know. Uh, things have changed in the House, and so now she's on the Ways and Means Committee, she's on the Armed Services Committee, and she's on the Administrative Committee. And being on the Armed Service requires her to go on some codels, and so she may not be able to do the schedule as we planned it. So that's why we're looking at redoing the uh, town hall meeting. But she wants me to personally meet, meet with each one of you so that we can hear concerns that you may have for your particular area, but as the city as a whole with the mayor office and everyone else to let you know that we're here to work for you and for the constituents and whatever we could do, we're here to help. I just wanna make the formal introduction and say thank you for having me. Thank you very much, we appreciate it. All right. So with that, I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, Ms. Smith is doing the invocation tonight, uh, and that will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone will please stand. You'll pray with me. God of wisdom, we seek your counsel today as we gather for this meeting. Give us clarity and open minds to listen. Let us have productive discussions that broaden our perspectives and guide us in problem solving and finding positive outcomes. Dear God, help us to apply your wisdom for the good of the city and our residents. Thank you for the abundant gifts that you give us and help us to share what you have given us with others. In your mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Smith. All right, Amy, if you will please call roll. Councillor Gwaltney. Here. Councillor Gear. Here. Councillor Alamon. Here. Councillor Wilburton. Here. Councillor Sims. Here. Councillor Jones. Here. Councillor Smith. Here. Councillor Nelms. Here. Councillor Andres. Here. Councillor Harden. Here. And President Wyatt. Here. All right, so we get Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so the next on the agenda is the reading of the minutes from our uh, council meeting of January 30, 2023. Those have previously been distributed. I'd entertain a motion and a second to dispense with the reading of such minutes and for approval of the same. We have a motion for Mr. Wolverton. And second. A second. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. And a second for Mr. Alamont. Okay, I didn't. It's okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And those are approved 11 to 0. Uh, we have a few uh, board vacancy um, issues to go over. Uh, first, we have the Arts Advisory Board. We have two new at-large positions uh, that we need to open. Um, Ms. Gear, how long would you like to have those open for? We, the, sh the shortest amount of period that's required, there are a couple of people already interested. Okay. So then uh, we could do that for our uh, February 27th meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do 4.30 on February 27th for each of those positions. Uh, we also have a Ward 2 Arts Advisory. Same, same thing for that one? Yes. Okay. Is that good with the Ward 2 guys? Okay. So we'll also do 4.30 on 227. Uh, then we have a Ward 1 BZA uh, position that closed today. Um, I, we did not have any applicants, at least that I'm aware of. Uh, so uh, how long would y'all like to leave that open? Two weeks. Two weeks, okay. So we'll do that one at 4.30 on uh, February 27th as well. Then we have a Ward 2 Beautification Board that closed uh, without any uh, applicants on that one. Um, 
I'm going to say we probably need a little bit longer on that one, uh, unless y'all either Ward Two or Mr. Sims, y'all think y'all have any problem with that? If we push that one out to uh, March 13th. Okay, so we'll do that at 4:30 on March 13th. All right, then we have some that we actually uh, have appointments for. Um, so first, we have the Ward 5 BZA position where we did interviews. Ms. Andrus, are you handling that? Uh, yes, I, I wanted to make a point to say that we had, uh, we, we actually interviewed for two different um, positions last week or two weeks ago. We had four absolutely outstanding interviews. Um, tonight we are going to uh, move to appoint William Johnson to the BZA, but I wanted to point out that we will be reaching out to the other candidates um, and find, actively find ways to get them involved with the city because really we had four just outstanding interviews and we were honored to be there with them. All right, so we have a motion for William Johnson. Do we have a second? Second. And second from, from Ms. Smith. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And congratulations to Mr. Johnson. That's approved 11 to 0. And then we have a Ward 5 Park Board. Uh, Ms. Smith, are you handling this one? Yes, and I would um, echo what uh, Ms. Andrus said. We had um, two wonderful candidates for the BZA position. We also had two wonderful candidates for the Park Board position. Um, and it is, it is uh, you almost feel guilty when you have um, such qualified people uh, to interview for these positions that want to be involved. So. Um, with that, I would appoint, uh, move to appoint Dr. Rob Sellers to the Ward 5 Park Board position. All right. We have a motion for Dr. Sellers. Do we have a second? Second. Second for Ms. Andrus. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And 11 to 0 for that one as well. And congratulations to Dr. Sellers. Yes. He was one of the 10 who yes, interviewed right. for the uh, at large position, yes, several years ago. All right, so that takes care of board vacancies. Um, uh, although I will remind uh, Ward 4 that uh, there is an HEC position that's closing in two weeks. We actually have a, several people who are uh, interested in that, so I think we fantastic. should have we should have some folks by that time. All right, um, we don't have any additions to the agenda tonight, so that brings us to the consent agenda. I would entertain a motion and a second for approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. second. <laughs> Motion by Ms. Smith, second by Mr. Gwaltney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, it's approved 11 to 0, which brings us to old business. First item 110123, request for consideration of placing a full page ad in the Chamber of Commerce magazine, brought to us by Councillor Andrus. And we will start with a report from finance, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, Finance Committee uh, met on February 6th. And uh, for this particular item, voted uh, 4 to 0 with one abstention. Uh, to recommend approval of the funding. Uh, it's uh, 1795.50 uh, from the advertising uh, line item. So five to, uh, four to zero to one out of finance. All right, so we have a motion from finance. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that is 11 to zero. Oh, well, actually, no, I abstain, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm abstaining, I'm abstaining again. I apologize. Uh, so that'll be 10 to zero to one. Uh, and passes and will be resolution 2315. All right, next item, 120123, request to set a bid date for March 13, 2023 for the Delcris sidewalk project, phase one, brought to us by Cale Smith. Uh, do we already have a report from finance, Mr. Jones? Uh, yes, sir. We uh, voted five to zero to recommend approval of, of setting that bid date for March the 13th All at right. uh, 430. Is it 430? Yeah, I think that's right. I got 4.45. Yeah, you're right, 4.45. Okay. 4.45. All right, so we will set that for March 13th. Yeah, uh, make sure. It does, you're right. You wanna, why don't we do 4.30 instead, just yeah. to make sure. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do 4.30 on March 13th, uh, and we will carry that item over to for that uh, bid date. All right, next item, 130123, request to authorize the mayor to sign a contract and pay appropriation to West Homewood Neighborhood Association, brought to us by Justin Limbaugh, Robert Burgett, and Melody Salter, and another report from Finance, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, uh, Finance Committee uh, met, voted 5-0 to zero to recommend approval of this item. This was already uh, uh, in the budget, so we're just approving the mayor to, uh, uh, to sign that contract. All right, we have a motion from finance. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And 
That is 11 to 0 and will be resolution 2316. Next item is 1401-23, request to authorize the mayor to sign a contract and pay appropriations to Class Tran, brought to us by Robert Burgett and Melody Salter. And again, a report from Finance, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, uh, Finance Committee met voted 5-0 to recommend approval of this item. All right, we have a motion from Finance. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that is also 11 to 0 and will be resolution 2317. <coughs> Next item, 04-12-22, request for consideration of changes to City's Workers' Compensation Occupational Medical Clinic, brought to us by myself, uh, and we'll have another report from Finance, Mr. Jones. Uh, this was on our previous, um, yeah, here we are, here we are. Um, yeah, this was one that we uh, removed from the table. So first of all, we voted 5-0 to, uh, uh, to remove this from the table. Uh, so that was 5-0. Uh, and then we voted five to zero to recommend approval uh, of changing to Alicant for the drug testing portion, uh, except for uh, the after hours, which will still be handled at uh, UAB Highlands. Uh, and then we're going to leave uh, the, the portion for the workers' compensation uh, with, uh, in, in finance committee. So five to zero for approval. All right, thank you very much. Another motion from finance. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That also passes 11 to 0 and be resolution 2318. Next item, 170123, public hearing set for February 27, 2023 at 6 p.m. for consideration of condemnation of the dwelling structure at 1509 Beckham Drive, brought to us by Wyatt Pugh. We will carry this item over for our next meeting and that public hearing on the 27th. Next item, 180123, public hearing set for tonight for consideration of a variance to the sign ordinance to permit six electronic message board window signs at 1831 28th Avenue South, Suite 160. Brought to us by Kyle Bass of Homewood Theater and Wyatt Pugh. Uh, and we will start with a report from Special Issues and Smith. Yes, the committee met last week and heard from Mr. Bass and voted five to zero to refer this item out to the full council without a recommendation pending the public hearing tonight. Motion was made by Ms. Gear and seconded by Mr. Alman. All right, thank you very much. With that, I will go ahead and open the public hearing. Uh, and uh, Mr. Bass and Mr. Pugh, if y'all want to come on up. And, if, and there's probably a sign in sheet there for you, Mr. Bass. If you'll just. Uh, Put your name down there, and then whenever you're ready, you can uh, just explain to everyone uh, what you're proposing here. Okay. Um, this is for Homewood Theater, right on the corner of uh, 28th Avenue South and 19th Street, right across the corner from, uh, from Dimitri's Barbecue. We'd just like to have, uh, we would love to have it in one panel on each side, but just each side of that corner to have electronic <coughs> signage just to be a uh, pretty much just an electronic uh, poster of coming attractions. Just like when you go to the movies uh, down in uh, Vestavia, they don't have the old big movie posters anymore. They just have uh, an electronic uh, board that will show you that. Again, with the, with the windows going cut more horizontal there, it would take uh, kind of three of those. So it's basically just giving you the information of what's the coming attraction and what would be, it's not any running lights, it's not any video, it would just be slowly changing about every 30 seconds for what's coming up at Homewood Theater. All right, thank you very much. Is there anyone else here to speak for or against this item? If not, then I will close the public hearing and ask if there are any questions or comments from council. Um, Kyle, I know you mentioned to us uh, in the committee meeting last week that the signs, you're only gonna basically have them on pretty much at night due to the fact that in the daytime you can't really see. That, that's right, uh, with anyway. the double paned reflective windows, they don't really show up in the daytime. The only time they would really be used is when it's dark at nighttime, right? And they would not be left on like overnight. They would, is well, that? We, we can do that on a timer and they can kick off. At a at, certain time. At okay. a certain time, right. Okay, all right, thank you. Is that something you could make part of the motion to approve? You can, you can proffer it. Yes. Sounds like you just did. Yes. Um, it, it basically, what we're saying is, um, it, could you formally proffer that that would be the case, that they would be uh, automatically cut off sure. at that particular yeah. yes. time? And, and we'll automatically cut them off. In other words, you're offering to limit your 
the variance uh, to a certain time period. Sure, sure, yeah, that would be great. Well, yeah. What is, what is What's the, well, we need um, to determine the time period. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because it gets, the light gets light. Uh, Mr. Bass, is, I went to your, I went this Christmas to it and I thought it was fabulous. I'm so glad y'all are doing this. But that's a lot of, that's a lot of light, lighted signs for us. <laughs> We don't tend to like those very much. Yeah. So we're trying to figure out how do we do this and still give you something you need, but not, not overwhelm the city. Sure. Um, but but I think one of the things that happens is it gets dark. More the more summer gets here, the later it gets dark. The more winter gets here, the more it gets dark. Yeah. So. I think what you would do is you, in I think you'd start at dusk whatever that dusk is and then in i think you'd have the same time period the same at time, the time at, at night, 10 night. Or at night. with 10 10 30 10 10 10 okay all right okay well then i would make a motion to all right are there any other questions or comments? I, I think I saw a few people reaching for their microphones. Ms. Gear. Hi there. I, yes, I hi. just I just wondered, really, is 10 o'clock late enough? Well, how late do your shows usually last, and do you want that to still be on when I, your latest I was trying to kind of process. We might run a little past 10 on some shows. If we could do 11 o'clock, I, I we're, we're almost always finished. You, you're in charge of the proffer, so you can. Okay. If I could change that to be at dusk till 11 o'clock, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. thank you. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, no? Okay. Well, if All right. Uh, so I've got one. Um, <laughs> uh, Kyle, I, I love your theater. I appreciate you showing me around the other day when I was with Barry. I think it's fantastic. I think it's wonderful for Homewood to have it. I even don't mind your signs. What I mind is allowing a providing a variance for electronic signs in, in windows then opens the door for other electronic signs in windows uh, or other electronic signs in general around the city and that scares me to death uh, because I don't know how we make a distinction between your business and another business because basically they're all zoned the same way so the sure. sign variant the sign ordinance applies to them the same way um, and so while I very much like your signs and wish that I could uh, vote yes. Uh, I don't see any way for me to, me personally, to do that without me having to vote yes on a bunch of other uh, potentially electronic signs that come, other electronic signs that potentially come before us. Uh, and, and from a legal standpoint, I just think it's important to stay consistent. So. I wish you all the best with your business. I uh, hope you understand uh, what I'm saying, because like I said, I think you've done a good job of trying to make these signs palatable uh, for the city. Um, so anyway, that's my comment. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Sims. I do have a follow-up question. So related to these signs you referenced that you know, you're going to transition the signs every 30 seconds to you know, coming attractions and so forth. Right, right. Is that all six of the signs or just the two middle ones? Uh, could you? Yeah, it, it's what we're trying to do with that. If the windows had been turned vertical, we just ask for two signs, you know, one on each panel. But the way they are, we, it, it's kind of the top information, the middle information, the bottom information go with the same kind of poster uh, for that, that thing. So they're, they're fairly static top and bottom just kind of, or that's the, the example I gave at least. It's mainly the information would change there in the middle. Okay, thanks. Okay. Because what I was trying to reconcile is if only the middle information would change if, right. if actually the top and the bottom needed to be electronic as well. Um, right. Because I think two middle electronic signs, you know, have less of an impact from a light standpoint. So I, I was just curious about the purpose. Thanks. Sure, sure, yeah, again, um, it would, you know, you see them again at the movies. They're they're more of a vertical type thing usually. So I was trying to kind of simulate that with the uh, with the sample there that you'd have maybe where it's coming, the act, and then how to get information. But yeah, right now I had them kind of changing all together there. Have you th thought about as as you know as I said earlier, we don't like electronic signs. Have you thought about a sandwich board you could put out um, out in the corner and put the different posters. Yeah, we, we've got it. That, that's what that one is. 
right in front of yeah, it. That's what made me frame. think of it. So it's kind of doing that. It, it kind of limits us to just the two sides. Because it does have something on both sides. Mr. Jones, did you have a comment? Well, yeah, just uh, when this first got on the agenda, I had nightmares from the uh, electronic billboard we, we had to deal with uh, <laughs> several years ago. Um, that, that was quite an experience. But um, I, I am concerned about how, how we handle other businesses because they'll all say, well, you can't see my sign within the window. Um, is there any openness to just having some lighting that would go on to posters at night? Uh, I mean, I just feel like maybe some lighting, um, you, you know, just like, like when you when you go to the movies now on the outside of the theater, they're not electronic. Uh, when you go to Lux or whatever, they're posters that are lighted uh, that will show what's coming. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to think of, of a way that would yeah. we could approve this where it, 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 we're not going to have other businesses coming to us and requesting electronic billboards it is basically what this is. Is there any way to limit my request to entertainment venues? No, not under the current ordinance. I don't, I don't see any way to, to do that, uh, to, to sort of carve out. We, I think it would require amending the ordinance to carve out that kind of business uh, is, is the problem. Um, and, and I'll say this, I mean, I, I did, you know, I made the point about electronic signs and that is my biggest concern. I also just have a concern about filling up windows with signs. I mean, we we just denied one of these uh, about filling up windows with signs, uh, that, the, separate from the electronic issue. Um, and so, you know, I again, I, wanting to be consistent, um, that you know, I, I I have concerns about that or concerns about you know, because uh, I think we have, quite frankly, another one coming uh, next week. Um, so. Uh, so anyway, I, I have concerns about, again, uh, being consistent from a legal standpoint. Um, and while I, again, I, I, wish, I wish I could choose which ones I, you know, just do which ones I like and which ones I don't, but uh, you, I, think, I think we do have to make sure that we're treating people equitably. So anyway, that's, that's my position. Any other questions or comments? All right, Ms. Smith, you, you want to make a motion or a comment? Yeah, uh, no, I, yes, because I, my, yes, I'll just make a motion. With the proper that the signs would be uh, turned off uh, automatically at the o'clock. So they would only be allowed between, uh, to be on between dusk yeah. and 11. Dusk and 11 o'clock, right, okay. per the proper window. Okay. So we have a motion. Second. Is that Mr. Alamon? Second from Mr. Alamon. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're going to have to do a, ro a roll call vote, please, Amy. All right. Councilor Gwaltney? No. Gear? Yes. Alamon? Yes. Wolverton? No. Sims? No. Jones? No. Smith? Yes. Nelms? Yes. Andres? Yes. Harden? No. And President Wyatt? No. <laughs> By my count, that's five to four five against. Four. I'm sorry, six, six, five. I'm sorry, six, five. Five, seven. Oh, five, yes. Six, Six five. against and five four. Correct. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, all right. So that uh, that request then fails. And again, I apologize, but Thank hope you, you understand. Time. I appreciate it. All right. Next item: 1901-23 public hearing set for tonight for consideration of a sign variance at 169 State Farm Parkway. Brought to us by Megan Ellis and of Advanced Sign and Lighting and McAllister Stelly and Wyatt Pugh, and another report from Special Issues, Ms. Smith. Yes, the committee met, uh, met last week, voted five to zero to refer this item also out to full council without a recommendation pending the public hearing tonight. Motion was made by Ms. Andrus and seconded by, seconded by Mr. Sims. All right, thank you very much. With that, I will go ahead and open the public hearing, and Ms. Ellis, I see, is already up at the podium. 
If you will, just tell us what you're proposing. Uh, yes, sir. I'm proposing um, extra signage at the location um, based on how the, how the building sits and um, that the pickup signs were necessary because of the it being new with McAllister's. They don't normally have pickups. Um, it faces State Farm Parkway and Lakeshore, so the front and rear, the actual, you enter at the rear of the building, and the front of the building faces Lakeshore, and there's no entrance on that side, but it, of course it would mean one over the front door. Um, that's the, the front. The side elevation, it opens up next to where the Taco Bell is, and that's where the pickup window is. And both of those are on the side? Or is one of those the back? The one on the right is the rear elevation, which, okay. which faces State Farm. So the only thing on the side is the pickup? The no, there's pickup. another. Okay. Oh, around the corner mm -hmm. in the front? Okay. Yeah, I'm with you now. Okay. Is there anyone else here to speak for or against this item? I'll close the public hearing uh, and ask if there are any questions or comments from council. Um, I drove over there today um, specifically to look because my first, the first thought I had was I was I, I couldn't really understand the need for the one on the lakeshore side only because I thought that tree line extended further down than it did, but I did notice that y'all's building is visible from Lakeshore. I actually can understand the sign on the Lakeshore side and obviously on the State Farm um, side, since that's gonna be y'all's entrance. Um, I think this, the sign on the side, kind of like we told the folks, that's kind of like we talked about with Chipotle, um, I think the sign on the Taco Bell sign side is kind of weird because the fact is the only people coming from that direction are people who are coming, I guess, from the hotels over there, I would guess, and they're gonna be able to see the sign anyway. Um, I, I feel like that's a lot of signs. Um, and I can't remember the, the pickup sign, the actual sign that's above the pickup window. Is it illuminated? It is. Okay. Um, and I know illumination is okay over in Wildwood, right? Why? Yeah, that's okay. Um, I feel like the, the side sign is a bit extraneous and I feel like the, um, the additional pickup, and I know that pickup windows are not normal for them, mm. but I think there's other ways to make that noticeable for people. Um, and the fact is if, they're, if they've called in a pickup order, they're gonna know there's gotta be somewhere to pick it up because they called it in. Um, so I feel like that's, use your brain cells to figure that one out. Um, I just feel like it's a lot of signs. It's a lot of signs. Um, and I get the ones on the front and the back, but the side ones and the big pickup sign, I'm not sure I get. That's just my, my. Anybody else? I would, I would concur the same thing. I think we have a problem along there. We lost Outback Steakhouse because they said there was a lack of visibility along Lakeshore because of all those trees that we can't seem to get cut. Um, and, and so they walked away from a site along there. Um, and so we've got to, be able to allow people to see these things from Lakeshore. But I think the request here is, you know, we don't, we're trying to, min we have sign ordinances for a purpose and we keep amending them. But, um, but I think if, if, if you cut down on the number of your sign requests, you probably get a little more favorable, at least from my perspective. Okay. I've got a couple of questions, but I don't want to jump in front of anybody. Um, Yes, there, it's moving. Um, one, there's no monument sign associated with this. Is that correct? There is. There is, there is a monument well, sign. Well, and, and isn't that the, it that's exists. the main. The I, yeah, I've already gotten it approved, and it's it's a double tenant sign, monument sign. Well, it, yeah, so I want to I want to be clear. Wait. Is yeah. it a, no, there's is one. the monument sign part of the, that large monument sign that has a list of, or is there one just for these two tenants that's out in front of this building? There's one for the two okay. tenants. That's out in front oh, of the building. Oh, okay. Got it. So that's already, so there's. Would you mind if we took a look at that? Yeah. So there's already going to be a monument sign. But this one, yeah, the monument sign actually already fits with this one. Okay, but, it, and then so also, is it, just it, will it also me, be on the main, the main Wildwood sign that lists all the businesses no. that are over there? No, this is a separate piece of property. I, I wouldn't think that, that it's on that. 
separate owner. Uh, if you have a big multi-tenant sign, I have a single. Sign. No, no, we're we're not no, installing a, it. If it is, I didn't get any drawings on that. That's for that shopping well, center back there, I think. Well, I mean, it has all the tenants that are in there. Pre it used to have the Kinko sign up there, which well, is yeah, what was in that building what, before. I, I, I don't believe I don't believe there's going to be tenant panels over there too. Okay, okay. I, I, yeah. I so just Brian, Andy's going to send that to Brian so he can put it up there. But just so you understand what we're talking about, we're talking about an eight foot high monument sign that is uh got to do this math uh what about 10 a little more than 10 feet across probably yeah um did we i don't remember that sign coming to us that sign did not come to us i don't know that it had to since it's a monument sign no that's an approved sign yeah okay that's an that's an accepted sign okay okay and so that makes a big difference <laughs> I, yeah i and i i assume this is a sign that is that runs perpendicular to Lakeshore, so you can see it, or is it run parallel? That's what I was looking for. I'm not certain where this sign is. It's got to be on the. It's got to be on the state farm. Is it, I'm looking at the state drawing. Farm. Um, I'm looking at the site plan, and I don't see it on here. It may okay. not be on this property. Okay. It may I'd be, be on. I'd be surprised it's not on that property. Yeah, I don't know for sure. For I just don't businesses. see it on my. And see, and that that sign is in my packet, so it surprises. It me that it's not on there's here. the sign if anyone wants yeah. to see it i'm sorry i didn't study this part of it because it was already pretty. no i understand I, it, I wonder if that's not on the state farm, state farm side be. because that's where the entrance is to both the the buildings are correct gonna, the so businesses are going to be mr pew can yes, before i get too far in front of my skis how how much or can you explain the variances to me yes that are requested mm -hmm. and the the exhibit that I put together just outlines the variances. Um, there is a there is a monument sign, and there are also some small um, directional signs that do not require. They're exempt from the the ordinance. The ordinance says they do not require a permit because they're only four square feet, and they're little freestanding signs. They're just directional. They they say like parking. Um, pickup window pick circle up window. building okay so so there's already a sign that says yeah, pickup pick up on it yeah so just to give you the they don't picture. they don't go on the building there's no you can't advertise with these they're just basically directions to show them where to drive around it well i mean at. that's essentially what the sign on the yeah, building I, is yeah i mean i i think the point I think that we've Ms. already Smith accomplished is making that. That, I, that i would agree with is i'm not sure if a pickup sign on the building is needed if you've got other signage around on the property that's directing you that to that same spot um, but Mr. Pugh, going back okay. to the, the right. variance, what, what, if you'll explain what the variance requests are. Yes, sir. So, Brian, if you'll go back to my exhibit. We don't know. Page that's one. On State Farm. Yeah. All right. So, what I've shown on the exhibit. The top, the top sign is just for reference. That is the compliant wall sign on the front. The Got one it. below it is, your, is the first variance request, and that's if you go around to the right side, you see McAllister's Deli repeated. Now, if you continue And walking, just let me interrupt you real quick. Yes, that's a variance for number? That would be a numbers variance. Okay. Because the, the ordinance permits one wall sign per... One monument sign and one wall sign. One monument sign, one wall sign. Okay. That's right. All right, I'm with you now. Okay, so uh, if you were to continue walking... To the right, and Brian, if you'll go to the second page, please, you'll see that pickup. Now that's directional in nature, but it's larger than four square feet. Therefore, it requires a permit. So Got I have it. to consider it something. It's a wall sign. So is that one both number and size? So that would just be a number. Okay. So it could be one foot by four feet, and it'd be legal. It could be. That's right. Four square feet would not require a permit. And how big is that? Uh, that's eleven. Point seven eight square feet. So, so have, okay. that one could be smaller, but still illuminated, serving the same purpose and not require variance. Um, the ordinance doesn't say anything about illuminated directional signs. Um, I, I hadn't really thought about that. But I mean, so uh, essentially, if that one if that one was four feet square feet, it would uh, fit. Illuminated signs are permitted. Right. But it, but if it was smaller, if it was four square feet instead of eleven, it would not require variance. I think it would probably be all right if it were only four square feet, even if it were eliminated. I think that would be okay. It wouldn't require a permit. 
have all right and then so that one's a number as well and then Brian. the one on the back is also a number variance yes, yes. Um, Brian if you'll go back so if you were to keep walking from the pickup window on around and go around the back you see this McAllister's deli sign up high that's a numbers variant for a third wall sign and that Excuse one is painted correct that, that one is painted on um, is that right it was my thinking that it was but um, it's illuminated oh and that that's I'm looking at that from State Farm Farm Parkway correct Lakeshore. Lake oh, that's from Lake. Yeah, the the, the no. one on the front is the is the State Farm Parkway. No, rear is State Farm. I'm so sorry. Rear is State Farm yeah. Parkway. Yeah. Oh. So they they've turned this around to face Lakeshore. Yeah. Uh, hold on, Miss Gear, do you have a comment? Well, it was that same question. I just keep getting confused about which side is the where people are going to be walking in. Are they walking in on the Lakeshore side? Lakeshore side is where the front door is located but you can't enter on that side. You so you only enter on the State Farm side, which is the rear of the building. You mean you enter the parking the lot? The parking lot, But you yes. enter the building on the Lakeshore side? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can also enter on the side that faces Taco Bell. So the, the side of the pickup window's on and the side's on. Okay. And then the only other question, how, I can't see how long that pickup uh, window sign oh, is. Do you see? 94. So it's eight. Almost eight feet. Okay, that's not okay. Okay, thank you. Well, and there's there's the additional pickup arrow also that I think is on the yeah, and I'll keep back going. side. So Brian, if you'll, if you'll go back, so that that McAllister's Deli on the rear. Now, if you were to go just drop down right below that big McAllister sign, then you'll see this pickup, and it's not too late to add a sweet tea sign. Those are both the same sign, just one's enlarged for clarification. Also on, and that's also on the side of the pickup window? No, that's that on, the on the back. on the back. It's on the back of the building. So on the, the back. The other one's on the side. Yeah. But that, there's a pickup on the side and a pickup on the back. Yeah. The, the, the one on the side is directly above the pickup window. I feel like my drawings would be a little less confusing. <laughs> I've got, this is the front. This is the side elevation. And all this is to scale so you can see how large it is. And then this is the rear elevation. All right. Okay, so um, I'll give my thoughts. Uh, the fact that there is a monument sign, we think, on the State Farm side, I don't see a need for a sign on that side if you've already got a monument sign on there. I don't see a need for the, for the large sign on the side because I, I'm not – I agree with Ms. Smith. If you're coming in there, you're already in there and, and know where you are. And then uh, lastly, because there are uh, ground, what I'll call ground signs that are directional uh, about pickup, I don't know that there needs to be any pickup uh, on the building itself. Uh, and I certainly don't think there needs to be one that says, that's talking about sweet tea and all of that stuff, which seems like an advertisement yes. as much as anything. Uh, and, and we've, and again, it, not to beat a dead horse, but we've we've had other businesses in the same area that we have been limiting of signs uh, about, um, and <coughs> whether it be Taco Bell or Chipotle, um, and so uh, that would be my thought is that I don't I personally don't see uh, that any I'm I'm happy to have the one on the front that's allowed, uh, and happy to have the monument sign that's allowed, but the rest of them seem to be duplicative at best. It would if we be don't allow the side or the rear sign, then there's going to be no signage at either of the entrances to the parking lot. So, so Except for the monument Except sign. for the monument sign. I don't know that the monument sign's on State Farm. Well, I would have to well we need to that. know that. Yeah, would you like <laughs> well, to? That wasn't part of the variant, so I didn't look I into it. I understand, but it affects what other signs, for us to consider a variance, it's important for us to consider what other signs are, are part of that business on that property. And that's why I understand yeah. exactly. I'm not fussing at you, but that I just want you to understand to why we're asking these questions. I am happy to carry this item over so that we can get an answer to that question because it may affect people's opinion, particularly regarding a sign on the back, yeah. I would imagine. So yes. um, if, uh, if you're okay with that, then I think that probably would be best unless you tell me there's some sort of time consideration here that you'd well, like us to decide this now. I just don't know that my customer will want to pay me to come back two more times. But if, if I could get a, 
if that's not located there or if it is you definitely or if I can email you definitely don't you don't have to come back for the committee meeting okay. it's, it's already in council so right. you, you wouldn't have we, to come it back won't even that. be heard at committee right okay. yeah. so this would just be coming back in two weeks to let us know to this body and let us know is it another Monday it is yeah. another Monday. and can it's I ask, have tonight. a trustful meeting that night okay can I ask one final question sure. absolutely I assume that the monument sign is also illuminated I believe so normally they are yeah yeah internally illuminated yeah okay I guess I guess you're asking for a, yeah. a variance on that pickup, but if you had it for four square feet, you wouldn't have to ask us for a variance. In my Would the opinion. illumination be allowed if we went down to four square feet? I, yes. I think so. Yeah. Okay. And so I think that's Should something that you, okay. you're asking for a lot from us, and that's one I think is pretty easy to say. We'll make it one foot by four feet, and to me, that's plenty big for what they need. Okay. And you don't have to ask us. Yeah. That that might help you. No, I, I, one. Yeah, Mr. Jones. The, the, but the sign on the front of the building is the most important one to me for you to have, so that you can see that from Lakeshore. Am mm -hmm. I still facing the correct way? Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay. Correct. So I mean, that's the most important one, and, and then the monument's going to direct people in. Well, right? depending on where the monument is located, if the monument is also also located on the lakeshore side what she's saying is then there would not be anything on the state farm parkway side no, that would indicate to do that one first i i've got the a folder with all the details on it so okay. i've yeah, yeah i would i would tell you that i think that this ought to be uh, ought to be carried over while we figure out where the monument sign is i agree and could i just add yeah. one mm -hmm. could we find out or maybe we remember did we allow taco bell to have a taco bell sign on both Lakeshore and the State Farm entrance side, or do we know? I believe we did, and um, and then but we then pr we disallowed them from having the the, the panels on the side with the sauce packets and the and then there was some other there was another sign I think on a side that we told them they could not have, but I do believe they have a sign both on the front and the on the Lakeshore and the um, I know they have one on the Lakeshore side because I drove by there today, um, and I believe they also have one on the State Farm Parkway side as well. All right, well then I'm gonna carry this over without objection. Uh, and uh, if you can get that answer for us uh, yeah. for two weeks, and, and if you can't be there, we're happy to carry it over again. Or okay. just send us the information. Yeah, or yeah. you can just send us the information. Okay. You can just give it to Mr. Pugh and he can relay it to us. Okay, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, next item. 040123 public hearing set for tonight for consideration to rezone 2916th place south from R5 attached dwelling unit district to NPD neighborhood preservation district. The applicant is Johnny Gossett, uh, the owner and owner of Bonnie, D, Bonnie B. O'Bannon to permit the construction of a new single family house. This comes to us from the planning commission with a vote of seven, seven to zero favorable recommendation of the rezone. We'll start with a report from PMD, uh, Ms. Andrus. Yes, after hearing from Jason Hale, the committee voted four to zero to refer this item back to the full council without recommendation pending the public hearing. The motion was made by Councilor Sims and seconded by Councilor Wolverton. All right, thank you very much. With that, I will go ahead and open the public hearing. I see Mr. Hale already at the uh, podium. Um, you look like Johnny Gossett. <laughs> <in this judge. laughs> not much, maybe, maybe a little bit. Um, and I'm assuming you've already signed in, uh, but if not, yep. please sign, sign in. And then just uh, tell us uh, what we got up here. Yeah, um, and I'm Jason Hale. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. I live at 1400 Sutherland Place. We are um, trying to downzone this. This is uh, property, I think everybody's familiar with where it is. Uh, it was a house that was previously condemned. Um, we are under contract to purchase it, actually subject to this. And we found out it was R5 when we went to get it surveyed. And R5, um, right now it's a single, single family residence. Um, I think it was just kind of an anomaly in the zoning. We would like to just build a single family residence. The R5 zoning is more restrictive on the setbacks. And um, what you can't tell from that is that the property really pinches it pinches in as you go to the back and gets pretty skinny and the city has treated part of that as a rear setback. Um, 
So it basically makes it very hard to build a house on, in summary. And uh, to me, it, it, everything around it is MBD on this side. There is an apartment complex on the other side. So it made sense to try to get it to MPD. Okay. Is there anyone else here to speak for or against this item? I'll close the public hearing and ask if there are any comments from or questions from council. I don't have a question, but I'll make the comment that uh, I think this is a good move for the property. We have cut the grass on this property every year that I've been on council at least twice. Uh, that's a pretty impressive fact that the Google Street View is actually up to date enough to show a cut <coughs> once. So, but we have maintained this property. We condemned it and tore down the garage a couple of years ago. So I think it's a, a good move for us to rezone and allow a house to be built that will be an asset to the neighborhood. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Mr. Sellers? Uh, I didn't know if you were going to move to approve. Well, okay. And I, w I just have a question. Um, I was thinking there's not a there's not two lots. There's no question mm -hmm. about two lots. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it backs up to, does it back up to kind of a little creek or do you? It does. Uh, the, the storm drain, uh, I don't know if it's a named creek, yeah. is down here at the bottom. Down, yeah. Down in this area down here. Yeah, it sounds like a little garbage can. And I believe a little bit as a flood zone. I mean, we won't, uh, yeah. the setbacks prevent you from getting down there anyway, but we, we plan to leave that as just rear yard. So you'll stay up toward where the current house is located? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, what we had thought was driveways like right here and the house basically could have lit out on this. You couldn't build that one back with the zoning that's there now. So it's too close to the street. Well, the across the street neighbors are going to be very happy. They seem to be. They're not here tonight, but they <laughs> supported it previously. So. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mr. Kendrick, will you give us the first reading? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. I would now entertain a motion and a second for unanimous consent. So moved. Motion by Ms. Smith, second <coughs> by Mr. Alamon, and Amy, a roll call vote, please. Councilor Gwaltney. Yes, ma'am. Gear. Yes. Alamon. Yes. Wolverton. Yes. Sims. Yes. Jones. Yes. Smith. Yes. Gnomes. Yes. Andres. Yes. Harden. Yes. Wyatt. Yes. All right, so that uh, we do have unanimous consent. Now I'd entertain a motion and a second for approval. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Gwaltney, second by Ms. Gear, and another roll call vote, please, Amy. Councilor Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Gear? Yes. Alamon? Yes. Wolverton? Yes. Sims? Yes. Jones? Yes. Smith? Yes. Nelms? Yes. Andres? Yes. Harden? Yes. And President Wyatt. Yes. So that is approved 11 to 0. It will be ordinance 2861. Thank, Thank you very much. Yep. All right. That brings us to the committee referral agenda. I would entertain a motion and a second for approval of that agenda. Second. I'm sorry. Who was the first? Mr. Motion by Mr. Alamon, second by Ms. Gear. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That is approved 11 to 0, which brings us to other new business. First item 090223, request to set a public hearing for consideration of a sign variance at 201 Green Springs Highway. Brought to us by Mo Alatum uh, and Wyatt Pugh. Uh, that public hearing will be set for our next meeting uh, on February 27th, uh, 2023 at 6 p.m. All right, uh, last item 10.02.23, request for consideration of approval of vouchers for the period of January 30, 2023 through February 13, 2023, brought to us by Robert Brigette and Melody Salter. 
Mr. Jones, is this Mr. Alamon? Yes, um, I was able to review the vouchers. We are approving all but three, and I've talked to uh, Chairman Jones about it, and we're okay. set to go. All right. So we have a motion from Mr. Alamon, second from Mr. Jones. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that is approved 11 to 0 and will be 20, resolution 2319. All right, uh, before we get to comments, uh, we do need to um, go into executive session tonight. Uh, so uh, we have a motion to go into executive session second. by Mr. Jones, a second by Ms. Andrus. And Mr. Kendrick, you want to? Yes, the executive session be limited to potential or pending litigation. All right, uh, and I would think that we'd be back there for about 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, so we will be back in about 10 or 15 minutes. All right, so uh, if someone wants to make a motion to I move take to return from to return from the session. Adjourn. <laughs> All, right. session. All right, so we have a motion for Ms. Andrus, a second for Mr. Sims. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And for the moment, that is nine to zero, uh, and we are back in regular session. Uh, and I think all we have left is announcements. Mr. Mayor? All right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Gwaltney had to step outside for just a second, so we'll start with Ms. Gear. Um, no announcements, but just kind of an interesting fact um, here at um, Black History Month. I did not know that civil rights icon, um, Fred Shuttlesworth, is a graduate and valedictorian of Rosedale High School. And everybody else here, here may already know that, but um, I was just... He, he lived all over the state, was, I think, born uh, or for a while lived outside of the state. Long time uh, lived in Ohio, but um, Birmingham Southern is having a documentary uh, about Fred Shuttlesworth uh, on February 22nd, 4, 4 to 6 p.m. I think T. Marie King helped put that documentary together, but I plan to go, and um, I think it would be a, a great thing for us to learn about. So I will be there. As okay. Well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Mr. Gwaltney. Yes, I will set uh, public safety after finance, I assume, at five o'clock, right? Yep. Um, the only thing, only comment that I have tonight is, it's great to see a lot of your faces at the uh, phase two of the Greenway groundbreaking on Friday. Uh, what a great thing happening in the city. I mean, the Lakeshore Trail is so phenomenal as it is today. I mean, it's used by so many around the region, not just here in Homewood, but also the connectivity that these things will bring to the city and the region just uh, instrumental in getting there. So, yay Homewood. That's it. Thank you very much. Mr. Wolverton. I'm just gonna set public works off to public safety. Um, just wanna thank Parks and Rec for um, a great basketball season. Our kids all, all enjoyed it. Um, our girls team had a particularly rough finish because they had won every single game. And then we went into the playoffs, and about 30 minutes before the game found out our star player was sick and went home early from school. And then we lost <laughs> for the first time when it, when it mattered the most. But it's all right. They had a great season. They enjoyed it. They played, they played their tails off. Um, and obviously we're thankful for the facilities that we have and the cooperation around the city to make those programs run. Um, and then really just um, – Quick reminder if anybody is on line right now that um, I am about to leave for our meeting um, with the potential uh, development plans for the Econo Lodge. Um, there was an incident a couple weeks ago that I think people um, all heard about, and so the, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see and hear what people have to say, but um, I appreciate 
those people that are coming out to hear and be engaged and involved in that process. So uh, I think that's it. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Mr. Sims. Mr. President, I'm so sorry Ooh. just to interrupt. Are, are we meeting on the 20th, President's Day? Yes. We President's are. Day is no longer a city holiday, okay. remember? Okay. Just that's okay. Good. We yep. switched that with No problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Thank you. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, February will operate normally. Uh, will be every Monday. Mr. Sims. Thanks. I just wanted to update that the beautification board met today. A couple of things I wanted to let you all know about. Um, one is that they're planning a creek cleanup in March uh, along Griffin Creek again. Also, they'll do a street cleanup on Earth Day on April 22nd. And also, the next quarter beautification board award ceremony will be March 22nd at noon. So it'd be great to have some council participation in that, in particular in Ward 2, because the business is in Ward 2. So just a little teaser there. Um, so I'll follow up with you all with additional details. But that's March 22nd at noon. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, sir. Finance at 5. And uh, just want to tell you uh, that there's so few times that you will be the deciding vote, and tonight was <laughs> one of those. Few. I didn't think it would be from a message <laughs> board. But anyway, uh, that, those are, if that's all that we disagree about as a council, I think we're pretty united. So I hope everyone has a nice Valentine's Day tomorrow. So Thank you very on. much. Ms. Smith. I'm going to set special issues to follow Public Works. and. Um, just uh, an announcement that the Homewood Historic Preservation Commission meeting is going to be due to Valentine's Day being tomorrow and some members thinking they probably needed to take their wives out to dinner for that occasion. Uh, we are moving our meeting to Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the same fourth floor conference room and I'm going to put that out on my social media and I'm going to ask Brian to put that on the uh, city website. So, there you <laughs> no, somebody, somebody. <laughs> or, and there, hey, there might be some of that. That's right. She, no, she's not. She's actually here. Miss <laughs> Nelms. So, this weekend. What? Yes. Oh. No, they're, they're teasing me about Megan going to the beach for her birthday. <laughs> I was like, whoopsies. Um, so, this weekend, y'all, the most incredible thing happened. Um, I didn't get a chance to go. But uh, Melanie and Nick and I were supposed to go, but we all just kind of flopped out at the last minute and we missed something really exciting. Um, the Star Spangled Girls were on stage with the Fleetwood Mac cover band yes. on and some band. Friday night. Yeah. There they are. Yeah. And, 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 some, yeah. and the girls came back feeling like rock stars mm -hmm. and mine in particular said that she wants to go on tour now <laughs> with the Fleetwood Mac cover band. So it was a, incredible. And there's some video um, around on Instagram. I saw it. This is incredible. And if, it's, it's hilarious because you have this right entire there. concert hall full of folks there to see this Fleetwood Mac cover band and all of these folks. And then when our band comes out, they start hooting and hollering. <laughs> like the real stars have come out and you can see the look on some faces like who's this <laughs> and it was it was just great uh, the next thing i wanted to brag about is jennifer andrus and i'm a, i'm gonna try not to go on and on because i got kind of teary just thinking about it but this girl right here oh <laughs> <laughs> this was her last year at the bell run uh kiss blowing a kiss to her hubby and I just wanted to recognize Jennifer for doing so much for other folks uh, when she's not here and when she's not at Birmingham Southern. Uh, you know, she's just kind of always looking out for the little guy. And this run benefits, you know, folks that are, you know, don't have as much to going for them uh, health-wise. And um, Jennifer, of course, as we know, has been through quite a battle and came back to running and doing this kind of thing. I mean, and I barely can run down the block and <laughs> she's just forever doing something. And every time I see her on Instagram, I'm like, oh my God, look at my girl. So yeah, I'm done. <laughs> well, I appreciate you telling me that she was blowing a kiss because without my glasses, it looked like she was holding her hand up to her ear to try to get more of a crowd to, to yell for her. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 That was so sweet. Thank you. Well, I did want to thank Councillor Sims because um, if, if you are if you are done, and I was I was yes, going to pick up on yeah. I th I had that on my list of things to talk about was uh, the Mercedes yesterday. So first of all, I'm not setting PND, um, but on my list of things to talk about, I did want to talk about uh, the um, Mercedes Marathon, which the last one. What? No, no, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I mean, I really am going to cry. I cried yesterday. Stacy Morales. I was standing in the Bell Runner tent, and I just grabbed Stacy Morales, and I'm like. Stacey Morales broke me. I, I've made it this far, and then I just kind of teared up. It was really powerful. I mean, you just can't. It, the crowd was unreal. The bell, the amount of bell runners that were out there for those little kids, and um, the kids the, the day before I, I didn't go, but in the rain, the, the bell runner, um, the little bell center kids. Um, the bell center raised two hundred and forty-five thousand dollars with bell runners. Um, I know it's just incredible. So thank you, Councilor Sims, because he um, he got us over the finish line. We, <laughs> my team, you know, you, you're supposed to raise a hundred dollars a mile, and we had a, a full marathon relay team, so we had 26, 20, and two of the young ladies on my team are from my office of admission, and so they didn't do any fundraising because they're you know they're like 22. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that 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 was really needed and appreciated, and I really do appreciate that. So anyway, it was just a great event, and Valerie McLean Cuddy, and the work that she has done in the track shack and what they have done for this community um you know it's just it's just a legacy i mean it's a true legacy it really is that and then and then jeannie colquitt and one of my best friends is jane lamb uh at the bell center and the work that they've done so i appreciate that my kids went there um you know anyway so anyway thanks i appreciate that that was really 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 sweet i really appreciate that um and then i wanted to share some litter getter stats um let me pull that up for you some litter getter stats so we heard um, in at the end of Jan by the end of January, I'm, I'm sorry, by the end of um, yes, okay, I'm sorry. By the end of January, since 20 December 2019 to the end of January 2023, the amount of trash that had been uh, collected in the litter getters countywide, over 20,000 pounds of trash, 10 tons of trash, uh, from our waterways. Most of it are styrofoam and plastic bottles. And they recycled the trash as much as possible, and they were able to recycle 3,541 pounds of what they pulled out of our waterway. So that's pretty amazing. So I want to, again, thank Berkeley, because uh, Berkeley's the one that saw the need to have two, not one, but two. Homeless got no one with two. And then also, just lastly, uh, phase two of the Greenway, what a great day. That was a really fabulous day. So I was just really, really glad to be there. And I want to thank the mayor for being there and uh, the Fresh Water Land Trust and the work that they do. And of course, Homewood's own, my hero, Jane Reed Ross. And that's all. So. All right, Mr. Hart. <laughs> I, I always hate going after Ms. Andrus. It's never fun. Um, we were out of the country so I did not get to come to the uh, Greenway 2 uh, grand opening of, of sorts of what we ever call that um, but but it did we went from the ritzy section of where we were to the poor section to see how it would be how my wife would we're gonna go see how the other people live and and you just have to so appreciate what we have and it's very difficult on a day-in day-out basis for us to appreciate what we have but uh, we need to all try to number one just fresh water I mean you know the whole time we we're going okay you can't drink that water you got to drink out of bottled water you know and you're constantly struggling with is that water good I mean and so uh, but just we've been given so much in this country and and you know I got to thank those guys from the founding fathers for what they created here but um, it, it was it, I'm sorry I missed it <clears throat> we were um, in a very nice place but we did get a chance to see the, how the other side lives, and it, it's tough. All right. Done. Thank you very much. Uh, I just got one thing um, that I think I saw in an email that Taste of Homewood is coming up um, yeah. March 16th, uh, that Thursday night. So uh, make your plans. That's always one. Of, I'm going to be out of town this year, which I'm upset about because that is one of my favorite events. Um, so. Uh, with that, uh, we will go ahead and adjourn tonight, and we'll see everyone in a couple weeks.